Oh, what a wonderful day that the Lord has given us once again to minister to you as well as you minister to the Lord by hearing the gospel and believing in the word of God. I know it's a beautiful day for most of us, I normally say, every day above the ground is a good day. And so I'm happy that you are watching this program. And I hope you've enjoyed the other service with Brother Richard Wiz in Narok. I pray that the Lord is going to multiply the bread for you and minister His grace and His mercy unto you and to your family at home. It's going to be a great time this morning as you patiently listen to the Word of God. The Lord is going to bless you for real because he is set to bless you. So I'm going to make a prayer so that we can continue and let the Lord have his way because today is his Sabbath day. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, I give thanks and praise and all the glory unto thee, Lord, for that this morning, once again, you've caused our ears to hear our eyes to see, our hearts to perceive. Thou hast moved, O oh God, to keep alive even our spirits and make us of thy people by the ministration of the word of God which you sent down from heaven by Jesus Christ and through the Holy Ghost anointing upon thy servants. Since morning, Lord, thy people have listened have been ministered to by you because you love them and that because you Lord is said to bless them more abundantly even these last days have thine own way therefore Lord today in this service and anoint thy servant his ears to hear his eyes to see and his heart to perceive and move, O oh God, today in such a way that we've never seen before to minister the end time message to them. That war that I've never heard anywhere else because you kept it for this time that thy people might glorify you thereby. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So let the Lord have a free course in you by His Word. Let Him minister to your needs even now. And if there be any sick among you, let Him touch you by His mighty hand and heal you or deliver you from every oppression that you got in your life. Be it in the mind, in the soul, in the heart, or even in the body. I trust the Lord to do that because He is mighty to save and He is gracious all the time. I'll speak to you briefly today about what's going on because of a vision that I'll share in this service. I keep saying that sometimes and you don't get it because sometimes I begin to preach and the Lord happens to change everything. A message comes direct from him. Like a Thursday is the Lord and that which I thought I would say won't come. Pray that this one, this time is going to come quickly because you need it. And we're going to have it for a blessing and for our deliverance also because of the time that we are living in. The corona pandemic, which we are seeing around this time, is for a sign from the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's for a sign for the things that are coming. And it's, it's just a beginning of more things to come. Or even worse things to come. Of course, many people don't want to hear that because we got used to being soothed and being told good things, you know, about what God can do 
and what he should not do you know you're like we are the bosses and he's the small man under our control but God is telling the world in these last days that he is in charge but I saw a vision and I told it to the church sometime last year and it was about a snake a flying serpent it was coming from a fruit which I put it in my mouth and the moment I crushed it I felt something was wrong terribly wrong and so from the mouth I threw it into with my hand out of my mouth and threw it I thought it would fall you know like any fruit out of the mouth but it didn't fall instead it flew got the wings and flew up the sky it was a fearful sight and I wrote it down on my phone at that time I'm going to read it for you on the night of 12th and 13th December 2019 a deadly venomous rattlesnake in a fruit a vision by night and I saw I was given a fruit to eat which I crushed with my teeth and lo I noticed there was something wrong with it like one soon discovers a rotten fruit by taste I pulled it out of my mouth and immediately found out that there was a snake inside the fruit. A little veno venomous rattlesnake that was hidden in the fruit. And after I pulled the fruit out of my mouth, I noticed that this snake was growing very fast. I quickly went into action to kill it immediately. It wasn't easy because it had the ability to fly. And I noticed that this ability to fly was given to it because of its, its flexibility and a brushed tail. All the while I noticed it was growing very, very fast. And after much battle, I killed it eventually and hung it on a tree. It was a scaring sight, so scaring I woke up out of sleep around 4 a.m. in the morning on the 12th of 13th December. 2019 those of you that have been in my services all along of land that God speaks to people through visions and dreams and even for signs he speaks to his people and if you are not aware two-thirds of the Bible is got only prophecies and those prophecies came when men of God heard the voice of the Lord as God spoke unto them in night visions or in dreams or in a word of revelation and for some of them who are privileged God spoke to them by his own mouth and they heard him speak oh God is still speaking even unto these last days at that time and even during those days we had not heard about this virus, this corona thing. It was first reported in China somewhere in November 17th, you know, from some media houses. But by the 20th of December, about a week after I saw that vision, there were about 20 cases that had been reported or confirmed of this COVID-19 disease. In Kenya here, we had not heard anything like that. I only shared the vision to the people in the church, like I always do with other visions or revelations that God brings to me by his word, by a vision, or by a dream. Praise God. And this reminds me something else, which happened some years ago and for a sign. And whatever I saw that time, 
is happening today. Praise God. Somewhere in Nakuru, in May 2013, they were born some two conjoined twins. <laughs> At the Rift Valley Provincial Hospital, if you recall, these twins were two boys and they had two heads. They, they shared, they shared, they shared, uh, they shared one head, they shared the liver, they shared the sexual organs, they shared the kidneys, they also shared the, the, the bladder, and they shared also the colon. They also shared the rib cage in, in them. But they had three hands and two separate heads and two legs. They say that time after extensive investigations and tests by the doctors that these two boys, their heart was functioning properly. Praise God. <clears throat> and they could not operate on these kids. For a while they thought, let them grow fast until the organs, you know, they can handle well. But they died. Unfortunately, on 11th of May, 2013. Around the same time, there was something happening in this country politically. So that there was a political formation which was created in Nakuru around the same time, which gave birth to the government that we have here now. And the things that are happening now reminds me of what I said when I saw those two conjoined twins. And I spoke to my colleagues, if they are listening now, they'll tell you that I told them that this that is happening and these kids that have just died is a sign of the end of this political marriage that is happening in this country today. It may not happen now, but it will happen before the end and we shall see. They told me recently that I was right. I don't see things and leave them pass by as though there is no voice of God coming to me or coming to the nation, speaking loudly to all of us most of the time that we should wake up. Praise the Lord. And this pandemic is the voice of God to this whole world. You better believe it today. It is the voice of God. But you know what? Men and all the nations of the world, including their kings and their priests and their leaders, are not even going to be moved by it. I'll be reading the book of Revelation and I'll show you why I know that this whole world is not going to repent because of what's going to happen. Even though worse things are yet to happen, they are not ready to repent. In this country, they don't care that people are dying of floods or the locusts or, or this corona thing. They are fighting for positions and for leadership when they should be busy getting something, a mind, help for the people that are suffering. Listen carefully. Praise the Lord. The prescription that is given for this corona thing <laughs> is interesting to me. And I began to write down, to analyze this prescription and I noticed something that I want to share with you because it is relevant also in the scriptures. And I want you to hear so well because if the Lord said, I'm going to kill this serpent, this flying serpent that quickly filled the sky and filled the whole world as I saw it with my eyes, the spiritual eyes in the night. 
If the Lord said, I'm going to kill it, I'm going to tell you today that this message is going to bring to end this thing. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to tell you what we're going to do together. Hallelujah. Because the Lord is full of mercy. And if we respond to God's call, if we respond to His message or His voice in a certain manner, however terrible the situation may be, God is going to move and show kindness and show mercy and bring deliverance to the land. And the only way that I know in the Bible that we ought to react or we ought to respond to any tragedy or a plague or any sickness, especially coming from the Lord, is through repentance. Hallelujah. In the book of Luke chapter 13, they were present at that time or that season. Some that told the Lord of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate mixed or mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering, saying unto them, Suppose ye that those Galileans were sinners above all these other Galileans, because they suffered such things. I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. The Lord saw not that tragedy, that evil work by Pilate to kill the Galileans, mingle their blood with their sacrifices as an act of God. And I tell you, every act of God is glorious. Whether it's an earthquake, whether it's a plague, whether it is death in the land, whether it is famine, whatsoever plague that God brings in the land, it is a glorious act of God. And the only response that mankind needs is repentance. So Jesus is saying, except you repent, you will also like, likewise perish. Of those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem. I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Praise God. Jesus is only showing us what needs to be done when trouble comes into a city. The Lord God Almighty spoke to a prophet and said, Is there any evil that shall come to a city that I, the Lord, has not brought it? Is there any plague that shall come to a city that I, the Lord, has not brought it? He was speaking to his men, his servants. It is painful sometimes, even to the men of God, to see people suffer, to see little children dying. Most of them have never heard the gospel. Most of them have never been taught the ways of the Lord. It's so painful to see people, some of them helpless, cry, crying for help and dying because of some plague or some affliction. And men of God, like the prophets, they suffer those afflictions of the people because God takes them through to see the pain and the suffering that they go through all the while they are going through those kind of situations. Even though the Lord is responsible for all things that happen, I say responsible because God is in charge of this world, He is in charge of the universe, He is in charge of 
the heavens and the heavens above and the earth below is in charge of every soul that is in this world and that is why I say whatsoever it is even now that is in your life don't blame the devil for it don't give him glory at any moment like he is powerful more than God or he is bigger than the Lord in might not so God is more powerful and glorious in might but what is the response of most of us when plagues come into the land for the government they say let us pray or they call a day of prayer like we normally do in this country for the Judas on television the TV preacher that got used to collecting money every day by threatening people. My friend and my brother called Lawrence, he told me this week they threatened people at gunpoint. And people have to give money because people are scared. They got altars in their houses <laughs> that the enemy has put in there. Although they don't see them, the preacher opens their eyes, quote and quote, and they begin to see something terrible happening to them. Being scared, they get all the money and send it to them. I admonish everyone that does send money to these TV Judases, these preachers on television that don't preach repentance, that don't teach the people the ways of God. You see, the Spirit of Christ, when He came, that Holy Ghost, that spirit guided the Lord and all the prophets and the apostles into all the truth, the truth of the word of God. And Jesus said, when I send the Holy Ghost to you, when he is come, the spirit of truth is come to you, he shall lead you, he shall guide you into all truth. He shall not guide you out of the word of God. Praise the Lord. He shall not guide you into those pagan holidays that people have in this world today. The Spirit of God cannot guide you into those birthday anniversaries, into those Easter Mondays. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord does not guide you into those pagan Christmas holidays, into those Halloweens and St. Patrick's Days and the way Ash Wednesdays. Those things that are not in the Bible, for the Lord Jesus Christ had the Spirit of Christ that people claim they have, but those things were not coming to Him at any time, nor did He, at one point, made sacrifices to idols. He had a revelation of the Holy Ghost. He had the power of God in Him. He had the knowledge of God in him. He had only the word of God which the Lord gave unto his servants and prophets for him. And Jesus came. In the volume of a book he came and as it is written of him. So the response that Jesus has for this situation that I have and that I want to share with you today is repentance. Some people tell me they repent even for the sins of other people, for the sins of their families, for the sins of their children. I don't have such a thing in the Bible. How can you? Have you become the mediator which is Jesus Christ? Have you become the sacrifice for sin that is Jesus Christ? Have you become the great I am that has power to take away the sins of another man and another? Can a sinner remove the sin of another man? God forbid. I can only repent of my own sins. You can only repent of your own sin. Praise the Lord. And therefore, this being the time of reflection, and I want you to understand this. 
Let us see. As I take you through the prescriptions for this corona thing. Why we need to repent as a nation. Why we need to repent as humanity. Even in this world. I don't want just to say to you repent. Without telling you what to repent of. When people came to John the Baptist by the river, as he preached repentance, or baptized him unto repentance, he told them what they ought to do in their time. And so, one of the prescriptions for this corona disease is that you've got to close your mouth. Take care of your mouth. It's like God is saying, shut up. <laughs> You've been lying for a mighty long time. We've had evil surmisings. We've had the curses. Some people curse even their children. Young children curse even their parents. They have, you have profaned the name of the Lord. And there have been so long voices of devils. And not of God. We have had slanderings. We have had murmurings. And God hates murmurers. But in the wilderness he killed them all. When they murmured against Moses. And so many people instead of praying. They murmur against the Lord. <laughs> there is a tongue in the mouth that has got poison. Many wars in this nation. The nations of the world whether it is Americas or the Middle East or anywhere else, many wars happen because of the poison in the tanks. And even this nation, about the time of the politics or elections, we got so many frogs coming out of the mouths of the leaders. Hateful spirits demonic they got they they are so fierce when they speak you cannot but just speak a sword or a machete and kill your neighbor you got a devil in you like that man who speaks those words he has the devil you got that devil in you to kill an innocent person or your neighbor or your friend and it's so easy in this country and this world today to kill at short notice in the streets of Nairobi for example just a small shout of a thief thief and all the demons rise up and I don't know where they get they, they get these tones or they get these weapons these these big things and they begin to hit someone, they won't let the police come to get a person and take him to the law. But even the police, they like it. Because they got the same demon in them. Praise the Lord. Murdering spirits, they kill at ease. It's so easy. It's so easy for some leaders even to kill and cut short the lives of some other men. And hurry them to hell. Where they will meet with them. The moment they get there. Because murderers go to hell. We need to repent because of that. So, for murder, you use the hands. And they are saying now, clean your hands, man. Clean your hands. Sanitize. Because of the evil works. I'm telling you this because this pandemic is for a sign from the Lord. God is saying, cleanse your hands, you ye sinners. He's saying, let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel. He's saying, speak evil of no man. He's saying, lift up another, bless another. Praise the Lord. He's saying, what you do to another, do to another. What you would have them do to you. He is saying, wake up 
and realize that I am in charge. Wake up and realize mine and every soul that sinneth it shall die. Praise the Lord. It says cleanse your hands because there have been a lot of shedding of blood. We better close those abortion clinics in the cities and towns. <laughs> blood flows down the drain in America every year from the abortion clinics. They better wake up now. God is speaking to them. Eve at all, they are hearing the voice. We are told to keep distance or stop socializing. God by his word says, come out from among the world. Be separate. Touch no unclean thing. Come out, he says, and you shall be mine own people. And I'll be your God unto you. God is calling his own people to come. Redeemed by his word. From kindred and tongues and nations. And even from the tribes. Where they belong. Thank God Jesus belonged to no tribe. I've had some people say he was a Jew. I always tell them he wasn't a Jew. And he wasn't a Jew because there was no blood of a man in him. The Bible says he was born of, of a virgin. Born of the Spirit of God. The Spirit came down from heaven, even the Holy Ghost. And overshadowed a woman, a virtuous woman. I'll be telling you about her maybe in the coming service. Because there is a revelation about the end time concerning the church. And the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. When that woman was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. And she brought forth a man child. He became the Christ of God. Without the blood of any man. Without any relations. With any kindred. Jesus was not a Jew. He's still not a Jew. And he is the son of God. And once we are redeemed from our tribe, from our kindred and nation, we are joined up to him and we become one. And therefore, we no longer belong to tribes and nations and tongues and kindreds. Like people say, I'm saved and I'm this tribe. I'm saved and I'm this tribe. That's nonsense. If you have come out from the world and you are baptized into Christ, you no longer belong to any tribe. You no longer belong to any nation or kindred or town. You belong to God. Sons of God. Praise the Lord. I'll be preaching about that maybe in the days that are coming. Hallelujah. But they tell us also to take care of the face. Amen. We have been masking for a long time. With makeup. Amen. Which I call hypocrisy, especially in the denominations. Hiding the shame that belongs to us as human beings, as a people that have forsaken the Lord, as a people that will not heed the commandments of God. This pandemic is for a sign. Hallelujah. God is speaking loudly. You better listen and repent. I know it's an old fashioned thing. Repentance. I know it's something that people don't want to hear about. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are not told even about that. When the pastor says, Raise up, raise up your hands. And say, Jesus Christ is my Lord. And you will be saved. They don't tell us to repent. They don't want you to relate to God from the heart. I don't know whether by raising up your hands, God is going to come through your fingers, into the hands, and all the way into your heart. I don't know whether such a thing would happen. But what I know is, 
You've got to be to, 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 to be quickened by the Spirit of God. And you've got to cry and weep before the Lord in repentance. You've got to bow, you know. You've got to see your very own sin as that which is wretched, that which is vile, that which is unclean. And then seek the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. Because only then shall He come into your heart. Because He will quickly by the blood of Jesus Christ takes away the sin and the iniquity inside of the heart and fill you with His Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. This message is needed in this world more than any other. Forget about those prayers that people make day and night and say we got to pray. Jesus said, or Jesus didn't say, pray when there is a plague or a calamity. He said, repent. Praise God. But this world will hear none of it. I'm going to read in the book of Revelation as I finish and prove to you that even this message, if you and I do not take it seriously, if you and I do not rise up and intercede for this nation and this whole year world, if you and I do not bow humbly before the mighty God in heaven and cry, the rest of the world will not do it. Praise God. I want you to be my help of faith. I want you to stand in the gap around this time. By the word which you are hearing today, I want you to stand in the gap. And I want you to plead forgiveness and mercy from the Lord. Because if you don't do it, no one else does it. And if you don't do it, we are going to see more trouble. And yes, more trouble is coming. But you know what? The Lord said he will keep his people. And what you are going to do you will not do it for me or for any other man. You are doing it for your own sake. Yes, I say for your own sake because you will find favor from the Lord. And who knows if after you found favor from the Lord and God visits the city with another plague, another sickness and finds that there is a man there, there is a woman in that city that worships God in spirit and in truth, whose heart is clean, whose mind is pure towards him. Who knows that peradventure God may save the whole city because of you. Hallelujah. God said in his word that he would have saved Sodom and Gomorrah if he had found only 10 righteous men in that city. I tell you, if you can seek the Lord from within your heart and pray and repent, you can save the whole city and the whole family around. Revelation chapter 16 says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first one went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. I say the other day that this pandemic this, after this pandemic, we are going to see the microchip campaign. It's happening in Europe already. And they want every man to be chipped. You see how they test for Corona? Or they screen for Corona? 
They have a small gun and they put it on your head or on your neck. Once you have the microchip, it will be so easy for them to know your medical condition even just by shake, the shaking of hands with the doctor. Praise the Lord. That's why I said we are headed to a rough time, especially those who know God and those who know that this microchip is a mark of the beast. You are headed for a rough time. Amen. I tell you today, don't take that chip. They are going to do a lot of campaigns in these days. I had a vision that there is going to be a major rollout in the middle of this decade of this microchip. And it seems like it's happening so fast. In Europe, they're already running for the microchip. It's being put in the hand or the forehead. And once you have it, you'll be cast into hell forever. God said in this word, if you read the book of Revelation, don't touch it. Please, don't. And tell your children about it. I know that they are going to use the governments of the world to get everyone chipped. And I know that many preachers, because they want to get their money and they want to get their glory and their fame, they are going to rally everyone to get a microchip. You see, they are going electronic now. We are saying we no longer take cash in the supermarkets or even in the church. They just have to take the microchips so that they can survive. But Jesus said, if the blind leads another blind man and he falls into a ditch, both of them are going to fall. The trouble is not yet. Praise God. So the Bible says, God is going to punish them that have received the mark of the beast. He's going to put them in a pestilence. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets. They are going to kill you. Everyone that will not take the microchip, and preachers like me that is telling people not to take the microchip, everyone will fight them. They will even be killed because they are saying this chip is good for our security. This chip is good for our medical, you know, uh, welfare. This chip is good for, for, for many things. Praise the Lord. And so, most of you, if you're going to obey the Lord and shun this chip, you're going to be killed. But God is going to punish them that are going to kill you. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and the power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Let me tell you something. And the man was scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Praise God. Verse 11, he says the same thing, that they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and they repented not of their deeds. 
Praise the Lord. In verse 21, the scripture says, And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. But men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. So what are we seeing? Amen. What are we seeing? The leaders of the world are bragging. I saw Mr. Trump on television. He was saying we are going to exterminate. We are going to destroy this invisible enemy. Talking about the pandemic. <laughs> Any war against the plague that comes from the Lord is a war against God himself. And God will bring you down. No matter how great you might be. The best place to go is down in our knees. The best thing to do is to repent. The best thing to do is to cry before the Lord and seek mercy. Seek forgiveness. Because God, He is here. will hear. Praise the Lord. He's a faithful God. He's a merciful God. Hallelujah. But if this don't happen and we don't do it, if you don't repent, the book of Isaiah 14, the Bible says, hell is moved to meet you at your coming. They're going to get into hell singing praises or carrying the Bible in your hand. If there is anything we need to do now, We need to repent. Everyone knows his own sin. He's not hid from you. It might be hid from anyone else, from everyone else, but it's not hid from you. You can see it in your mind. You can see it in your heart. You can see it in your soul. God is merciful and gracious to forgive. And he said in the word of God, though your sin be as red as a scarlet, said, if you come and reason with me, I'll make them white as wool or as snow. He's a merciful God. Oh, how, what a wonderful God we serve. If it wasn't for him, I would not be here. Praise the Lord. I think I'm the worst like Paul said, the chief of sinners. If it wasn't the Lord, I would not be alive today. I'm alive because of his mercy and forgiveness. And so, take time at home now, wherever you are, and pray and repent and seek the Lord, asking for mercy, and he will hear and forgive. To God be the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I'll be praying for you. Please, I will. Wherever you are, I, you have your hand to lift you up. And we're going to win in Jesus' name. Praise God.